What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to update your records in your database for our CRM tool using Python and Kinter. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, I'm going to show you how to update the records in your database. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, what do we got so far? We got our database here. We can search our customers. When we do, we can search by whatever last name. When we do, we get this thing, but we can't really do anything with this, right? We can't update these, we can save it to Excel, but we can actually edit these records. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Now, we could create another button here. And it could say edit customers, and then we can create a whole new screen and start all over again. But a lot of this is going to be redone, we're going to have to just copy the code and do it again. So instead of doing that, I'm just going to use this search customers window. And we're just going to update it right here. So the first thing I want to do is add a little button next to each of these records that we can click on that says edit, right? So let's go ahead and do that. And we might change this search customers button to say search slash edit customers. So let's go ahead and do that. In fact, I'm just going to go down to the bottom. And instead of search customers, let's say search slash edit customers. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's go to our search customers function here. And let's just look to where we're actually outputting the records onto the screen right here. And right above there, let's create a new button, let's call this edit button, I don't know. And it's going to be a button. And we want it to be in our search customers field uh, window, and we want the text to say, edit. And then we need to put that on the screen, row something, column something. And now down here, we're putting stuff in column and row index and num, right? So let's just go index and num. But if we do this, it's going to overwrite the first column or first name. So we would go like maybe negative one, but then that our num starts at zero. So negative one for a column doesn't work. So instead down here, we need to just go num plus one, so move it all over. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. And searcher. And you can see our new button says search slash edit customers now. And let's pull up elder by last name. And now we get this button next to this and maybe we need to make this a little bigger now since there's an extra columns, we can do that. But now check this out, the button doesn't do anything yet. But when you're updating a record, we've talked about this before, it, is, it needs to be a unique record, right? We have a bunch of different elder records. So we can't update elder, we have to update elders ID, which is right here one, or if we want to update this one, Mary elder, she's unique user ID number three. So we need to reference that user ID number. So we need to grab it. So let's grab it now. And let's just put it on this button just so we are very sure we're using the right record with the right person. So let's do that real quick. Uh, but first, I'm going to come up here. And let's just make this a little bit bigger. So I'll put it at 1100. <laughs> no big deal. So okay, how do we do that? Well, you remember, our ID or our database returns a list, right? And we can reference the th things in a list. So actually, let's just pull this back up real quick. And let me search for elder. So this is the zero, one, two, three, fourth thing in our list, the user ID is the fourth item in our list. So we need to reference that. So let's pull back up our code. And let's just make uh, an ID, ID reference variable, and we need this to be in see our result is what we're returning. But remember, we're looping through it. So instead of referencing the result list, we'll reference the x list. So it's going to be x. 
and then which item is that? It's going to be four. So here we can come down here and actually this is a number and we need to actually turn it into a string. I'll show you why in just a second. So let's just wrap this whole thing in the string function to convert that to a string. Now come down to our button and I'm going to put a space and let's concatenate and put that ID underscore reference. And this is why we had to turn it into a string because you can't concatenate concatenate. It's a hard word to say a number with a string. This is a string. So Okay, that's why we changed it to uh, a string. So all right, let's run this again. Search edit customers. Let's search for elder. Search by last name. Okay, so elder or edit one, it's ID one, edit three, ID three. All right, so we know now exactly uh, which ID we're dealing with, right? So that's good. So okay, now we need to actually do stuff with that information, right? So let's see, we can get rid of this, we don't really need that anymore. But now we need to create a command. And set it equal to now normally, we just would say, let's create a, a thing to edit this a function to edit this It's called edit now. Normally, we would just do it like that. But we need to actually pass in a couple of things, we need to pass in uh, that ID number, and uh, probably something else, maybe the index number for the row. So in order to pass things into a function using a button in Kinter, as we know, we have to create a lambda. So let's go lambda. And now look, this looks like a capital L. That's just what sublime text does. It's not a capital L that is a lowercase l. So just remember that. So let's create this edit now function. And we want to pass in a couple of things. First, we want to pass in this ID reference. So let's do that. And we also want to pass in the index. So we know what row we're on, because we're going to put the return results to edit these things underneath there. So we need to know which uh, index that is, or which row that is. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create this edit now function. So let's just kind of come up here. And here's our search now. And I don't know, let's just do it right here. We want to define edit now. And we want to pass in that ID and that uh, row, the ID and the index. I guess we can call it index. Okay, so first things first, before we get into any database stuff, we need to actually think about how we want to edit these fields. Well, when we first created our records, we we typed them in entry boxes. So let's create some entry boxes, again, that we can then edit inside of the our new window here, inside of our search customer window, uh, and then save it like that. So let's just let's see, look around and let's just kind of go back to the very beginning of this series where we created our first set of uh, labels and boxes. And let's just copy all those. And here they are, our original entry boxes, and our original labels. So I'm just going to copy all this stuff. All right, control C to copy it and bring it back up here to our new edit now function. And I'm just going to paste all this stuff in and highlight it all again, because we need to have this all over. Okay, so let's change the name of these boxes a little bit because they're the same names of our original boxes from our original screen. And so we need to change the names, because otherwise things are going to get a little wonky. So I'm just going to change them all to two. So last name box two, address box, we can keep the labels the same, we don't really care about those. But the boxes themselves need to be changed their names. So just bear with me a second here. Box two, almost done. And oh, one more price paid box, and we need to create another one as well. So I'm going to just copy this and paste and instead of price pay, this is going to be the in or the ID. All right, so we want to make sure there's a box for the ID. Okay, now, another thing, these are all in our root window, and we're no longer working with our root, we're now working with our search customers window. So we need to go through here and change all of these. 
Seems a little silly, but oops. it's easier to copy and paste and then edit than it is to just retype out all of these things. We'd, we'd be here all day. So root, root, root. Let's see, root, 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 root. Changing all the roots. Good fun. It's the day after New Year's Day. So things are a little slow today. Hopefully you guys are feeling better. All right, so now, where are these going? We we got this on row one, that's no good. We want to put, remember we put in our index. So we need to change this to index plus and then whatever. So let's go through and change all these, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh, and we also need to create one for our ID, ID underscore label. And it's going to be a label. And it's going to be in search customers. And the text will be user ID. And then we want to dot grid this to row equals ID plus, where are we at here? Pull this over. ID plus 14, column, UMN equals zero. And let's go ahead and sticky this like all their other ones and give it a pad X equals what? 10. And let's give this top one a pad y equals 10. Okay, so that's good. And let's do that same thing here for the first one. Pad y equals 10. Okay, so now we gotta change all these two. So index plus one, index plus two, index plus three, four, five, Six, very glamorous T. Kenter, Kenter work we're doing today. 11, 12, 13, and this is gonna be 14. Okay, so let's save this and run it and see if that worked. Probably missing something here, I did that pretty fast. So let's search for elder, search by last name. We got a couple of these, let's change Mary. And this button is getting in the way. So what do we want to do about that? Uh, I guess we need index plus two. Uh, otherwise, everything's looking good, right? All right, so let's go through here and make all those changes. Um, da -da -da -dum, where are we at here? Let's just right up here, go index plus equals one. See if that'll do the trick. Fast and easy, lazy way. Search customers. Search for elder by last name. And we want to do this and then boom, that works out good. Now underneath here, we probably want a button that says save or update or something. So let's go ahead and do this. And we're also going to need to make this a little bigger, it looks like. So let's make those two changes real quick. So let's pull this up and I'm just gonna come up here to our search customers thing. And instead of 600, let's put this at 800. And hopefully that's big enough. We'll soon find out. And let's go down here to these last boxes and let's create another box called uh, save record. And it's gonna be a button. And it's gonna be in our search customers window. And we want the text to say uh, save save customer or save save data i don't know save record oh no let's let's go update yeah update record all right okay so the save underscore record dot grid is going to be in row index plus 15 and let's put this in column 
equals zero. Give it a pad X of 10. Okay, so let's save this and run it. Make sure that looked okay. Search edit customers. Search by elder. Oh, let's just do Smith to make sure one record still is working well too. There's Tim Smith. And we can give this all some space if we want. You know, some padding. Whatever. All right, let's go edit. This pops up. Okay. So now we need to propagate these fields with this information, right? Update record button doesn't do anything yet. But this video is getting a little bit long, so we'll go ahead and pick this up in the next video. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. You pay just $49 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 70,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.